I'm going to start on Arsenal. First win away in Spain since 2006. One of only a handful of teams in the past decade to win away in Europe at Sevilla. Uh, how, how proud were you of the performance and the win tonight from Arsenal? Win is massive. The win was massive today. I feel like just going, just, just looking at the game as a whole, I think for me, first half we came out, a lot of people would have to say about Saka's performance. They'd say uh, a really bad first half, it wasn't anywhere to be seen. But I think a lot, what he was doing, what Saka was doing in that first half was really defending. Like that's majority of what his work was, was, was in that game or in that first half was was him just defending and helping Ben White because on the flanks they were just non-stop from the right side to the left side and they were just putting the ball over to the left side and then they go from the right side over to the left side so they, they were just relentless but um I think overall the first half was not necessarily shaky but it's what you expect from an away game when you go away especially in Europe especially in Europe um the goal from Martinelli he had a few chances he had a few chances in in the first half which he did um miss but Gabriel Jesus the the quick thinking to be able to just flick it back and pass it like literally he looked up once and passed it straight away like just that instinct there to just quickly pass the ball to make sure that the attacker can get through on goal is just wicked and the finish was just amazing <laughs> he just went past the keeper um for me Erdegaard is a massive a massive issue in, in not not only this game this this is I think it's really becoming an issue now how much Erdegaard just really is disappearing in games he's just he's not asking like for me it's not even it's not even about if he doesn't have to just score a goal or assist a goal for me to recognize him in a game but i want Erdegaard to to ask for the ball more call for the ball say i want it give it to me let me try to do something let me be on the ball more and just one last thing uh, actually two last things tomiyasu amazing in this game amazing in this game i've been calling for tom yasu to go on that left back position i've been calling for it for so long and finally tom yasu was put in that position he showed us where it is what it is to be in that position he grabbed it with both hands the opportunity and he made sure like listen i'm here to stay i want to be here i want to play in this team more in this position david raya unfortunately for me another mayor of a game he made a couple of good saves but overall that that last chance where he tried punching i don't know this man was trying to do a superman dive i don't know what he was trying to do and he nearly punched it into his own net my heart was in my mouth and um declan rice a true performance from declan rice i i, I just i can't say it any more times that this guy is one of the best players on the pitch for us obviously gabriel jesus got the man of the match but declan rice is just relentless the amount of times in my watch along i sat there and said declan rice again for us he literally defensively pushing the ball forward, driving forward with the ball. Which, it, just a great win. A great win, to be honest. A great win. And a finish from Gabriel Jesus as well. What a finish. For the people that say that Gabriel Jesus can't finish, hold that. Because he did today. What a finish. Top right corner, man. But it, a great win from us, man. Great mm. win. I can't be more happier. I hear you on that. Nathan, I know you're someone that, that backs what Arsenal were doing. Uh, do you concur? Great win. Still some problems with the performance? Or do you just, just look at this as... It's a really hard away tie in the Champions League and, and, and that's the biggest focus. I mean, in isolation, it's a great win. Um, you know, you go away in the Champions League game to Seville, who've got a you know solid European pedigree and you you know grind out a 2-1 result, you, you've got to be happy. And obviously that puts us in a position where, where we're close to kind of qualifying and got if we win our next game um, against Seville at home, we're almost certain to, well, we're close to finishing top of the group which would be massive. Um, in terms of problems, I think there's been, with the changes that have kind of come into the squad, Declan Rice coming in and Jorginho playing at six, I think we're struggling to get that whole right side involved in the game. I see Odegaard is struggling. I feel Saka is struggling. And I feel like it's to do with the fact that we don't play as many vertical passes. We're not getting people, we're not getting them on the ball as quick as possible. 
So Odegaard is not really a creative in the sense of a KDB or even a you know Madison or a Bruno where they keep where he whips balls in and creates from you know from deep areas. He's more of a player that shines when he's playing between the lines. And when you look at how we move around, and we had the same, we saw a similar pattern against Chelsea where we move the ball left to right, but we don't really progress the ball forward that quickly. And as a result, that whole right side is, is struggling immensely. So I think whilst you're getting results, it's all, you know, it's all well and dandy, but we've got to try to find a way to get the best out of two players in Odegaard and Saka who were our shining lights last season. And maybe it might have to be the manager doing some sort of tactical tweak and finding a way to get the best out of Odegaard because at the minute he's drowning. He's, he's not involved in the game. He was a passenger in that first half. Second half as well, didn't do nothing, missed an missed easy chance. And he's very rarely on the ball in areas where he can affect the game. And I think that's been a common theme this season for Arsenal. Mm. And a, a big criticism for him. Yeah, I mean, Jay, is this a case of just the, the likes of Odegaard being out of form? Is it better to play him? Do you think that he needs to be dropped or... Is this just a case of where standards are higher now and we need to demand more from these players week in, week out? Do you think it's fair that, 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 that even with, with the win, the likes of Odegaard are picking up so much criticism? Um, to be honest, no one's free from criticism, to be honest. So you can't really try and choose how you criticise a player. Everyone's free to criticise them in their own way. I do think some of the abuse is way over the top, though, and social media has this thing of, Everyone's saying the same stuff and thinking it's quarter. Cool who can say all the guard first? But yeah, he's out of form. He's not playing all. He's not playing his best. No one his best. But I'm a massive all the guard fan, so I'm behind him. I'm just hoping that he can pick it up, return to his old ways. And Arteta taking him off is even a good thing, man. If he's playing crap, get him out of there. Like uh, I like the way Arteta doesn't hesitate to make substitutions. You saw against Chelsea, the likes of Jesus, Zinchenko, all the guard. Our big players are coming off because if they're not playing well, they're not playing well. I just hope all the guard can turn it around, really. And you know what? Really, really quickly. Um, I didn't watch the Arsenal game, so I'm literally just going off of what you men are saying. But for me, here's, here is where my problem lies. When people start tossing around these world-class tags after a couple months and that. You, you, you have to see a body of work over a long period of time before we can start tossing around, he's world-class, he's world-class, he's world-class. At this rate, by Arsenal, well, a lot of Arsenal fans, you guys got a full world-class 11, and now you've got Man Go missing it. I don't think world-class, to be honest. I don't think so. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Yes, I think they, there's, yes, a, I think there's a big distinction between performing at a world-class level and being world-class. I don't, I don't, I think, I don't think... I don't I think, think that was a difference. He was world class after one season yeah. of football. So even like nah, likes of Saliba, no, no. I think he's world class Saliba, anyway. I'll be honest. He's, yeah, he's played. We got one world. right here, fam. We got one right here talking about you world class. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, well, he's top we're, class anyway. Like whatever. He could be, he, on the lane, and that's man. and that's fine. You could be a great player. You could be fantastic. You could be the best player on the team, even. But when you start tossing around these world class tags. That's when I'm like, hold on, wait a minute, man. What are we actually talking about? What does world class even mean anymore? That's that's can, my. Let me ask you a question, yeah. Can, 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 can a world class game? player be off form? Yeah, can a world class player be off form? A world class player can be on off form. However, you have to have a long enough body of work to say this is just the blip. Wait, so if a world class player can be off form. Why are you then saying I thought he was world class? Maybe he's just a fool. Hear what I did you hear what I, but, hear what I just said? Bro, I said you have to have a long enough body of work, years and years and years of performing at the very, very. No, top I, I don't level. think we've reached the point in all the guards tenure at Arsenal Agreed, to start saying. Uh, oh. No, I, I don't think I don't think we've reached that point in all the guards tenure at Arsenal to start saying oh, long enough body of work. He's a top class player, mate. Yeah. Well, I, I, listen, I agree with what you're saying. I think Odegaard is, but this is, but this is what happens in 2023. A player like Odegaard could have 18 months where he's sensational, and then he hits some bad form, as you're seeing now, and you get the see. I always knew from certain groups, see, I always knew he was of this standard, and this is what, and this is the difference. I, I can call for Rashford to be dropped. I'm not one of these people that thinks he should never kick a ball for Man United again because he's in terrible form right now because I don't necessarily think that's true. Does that mean yeah. I'm not, that, that, that I, I don't want us to sign 
if there's a chance of signing someone better that performs more regularly, I want that as well. I'm not a fanboy. I want Man United on my preference. And I just think there's a lot of, there's so many people now when it comes to the analyzing of players, professionals do it as well. There's a lot of, I told you so. There's a lot of, I told you so because of one good moment or a a, a poor run of games. And I'm sure the older guards and the sackers of this world are going to, their performance levels are going to increase and go to another level. We've created this weird space in football where we talk about football players and teams like they can't go in and out of form. This has been happening since day dot. There's there's yep. literally been two players in my lifetime who I've seen barely drop form for 15 years, and that's Messi and Ronaldo. They are not the rule. They are beyond exceptions. Everybody else goes through up and down times. And You could argue R9 before the knee injuries. Outside of that, most players go through really tough periods. There was a time at my club where Giggs was in his early 30s, and he was being booed week in, week out by the Old Trafford faithful because he went through such a bad period. He, there was a, he was close to being sold. He was so poor. He then went on to play for another eight years and won five more titles at Champions League and, mm-hmm. and, and was absolutely brilliant. And yep. you sometimes just have to persevere, I think. Yep. I, and you're right. I think Odegaard should yep. be criticised for what's going on right now. But the remedy for it is always so extreme. Sell him by someone else. And no, the irony is the new guy that comes in... Uh, well, let one know something. James Madison is probably the most informed attacking midfielder right now in the league. He will hit dry patches this season, yep. next season, maybe the, at some point, because he, he isn't of a level where he's going to maintain what he's doing now for every single game for the rest of his career, for every single month and, for the rest of his career. It's mental what we're creating as football you know, fans. You know, what, Terry, yeah? to, you know what the issue oh, yeah. is as well? Like, as fan bases, we have these things where we create stands or we have people on Twitter who glorify, who were over hype players, and you'll get it within, yeah. within every fan base. So, you know, again, with Odegaard, world class, yeah, he was in world class form. But as my, as, as a guy mentioned earlier, you've got to do it for a sustained period of time. You've got to have a, a body of work, but we're so quick, or people on Twitter are so quick to build players up and then destroy them. So it's almost like when they're, when they're in that vein of form, it's, oh, they're the, you know, they're the best ever. And then as soon as they start to falter or not have... Yeah. Or drop in form, everybody wants to, you know, shit on them and 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 get onto them. And, and that's the kind of culture Twitter's kind of developed where mm. when people are playing well, they're the best, and when people are not, they're the worst. There's no in between, there's no yeah, there's no I, gray area. Can, yeah. can, I, can I just can I just say can I just say one thing? Sorry, just just about Erdogan, just quickly, yeah. I think today was very important because that was a statement sub there. The substitution that Mikel Arteta made there. You could see that Erdegaard was fuming when he got subbed off. It was a statement sub for him to bring on Havertz instead of him when Havertz has been out of the team. Statement sub, man. I feel like I feel like now that Martin that's happened to Martin Erdegaard finally, he he might start to pick it up now. That might have hurt him. And sometimes players get hurt and end up improving. Once because you have to deal with that's why Alex Ferguson was the best. Because he'd have different ways of... He would never deal with, with one player like he would with Eric Cantona. He'd always deal with Eric Cantona different. So, the way that he's subbed him off there, he could come back. And we, we've yeah. never really seen Erdegaard get subbed off like that and be angry and mm. vex and, you know what I mean? How he could come back. So, I feel like that's that's important that he was able to get subbed off there and we could actually have a chance to see something, and, like, see and, anger in his performance. And what I will say to, co- to close out uh, my point, I suppose, is that it's not necessarily an attack on Arsenal fans. United fans do it too. And it's not a case of... Arsenal fans are deluded. It's a it's a case of football fans are setting up their the best players to fail. They are doomed to fail when you put them on the moon, and they will invariably have to come back to earth at some point. So let's relax on on the super hype. He's world class. He's world class. He's world class. They're playing fantastic. Let them play ball, and then once they've put the body of work together, now you can then you can call them world class after they've won a yeah. whole bunch of things. That's my that opinion. being said though.